Hello everyone! In this video, I will briefly summarize what is GPT-2 and how it is working. From previous video, we have learned GPT-1. If you have not watched it yet, here I give you the link. But let me quickly brush up the GPT-1 so we can clearly understand what has been improved on GPT-2. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Training of a Language Model. In order to understand GPT, Firstly, you should understand how language model is working. Language model predicts next token using given tokens, just like next word suggestions in this slide. More inputs, better prediction. GPT basically a language model. Then why it is called generative pre-trained language model? Language model can be trained without human label data since you can programmatically generate label from raw text. So GPT is a generative language model. One of drawbacks of GPT-1 was the fine-tuning step. And now, here comes GPT-2. GPT-2 clearly removes the fine-tuning step. Let's look at the next slide. Do you see the difference? First, let's look at the size of the GPT-1 and GPT-2. Yes, GPT-2 has almost 10 times greater parameters than GPT-1 and also uses almost 10 times more train data. Most importantly, while GPT-1 was required to fine-tuning for each downstream tasks, GPT-2 can be directly used for the any downstream tasks. Fine-tuning was a big drawback of GPT-1. Think about it. Honestly, fine-tuning is not easy. Takes much time and much effort and much money. And one fine-tuned model cannot be used for other downstream either, which is cost-inefficient. In contrast, GPT-2 can be directly used for downstream tasks. It is free from fine-tuning. Wow! This is amazing, but how? You know, GPT without fine-tuning is just a language model. How the language model can be used for downstream tasks such as translation or question answering? Normally, language model objective function is maximizing the probability of output given input tokens. So is GPT-1. However, GPT-2 objective function is different. There is one more condition. It is maximizing the probability of output given input tokens and given task information. When you train normal language model with a raw text, how are you doing? You can just train your language model to output doing with the input tokens, how are you? When you train GPT-2, you can give special task token with input tokens like this example. When input is how are you, and the given task is translate to Korean, you can train the GPT-2 to output Korean translated text. GPT-2 also can do next token prediction. Here are train data examples for GPT-2. You can check there is a translate to Korean special token in the train data. And you can see how GPT-2 can make different outputs while GPT-2 is still language model. We can assign tasks to GPT-2 by just adding special task tokens next to input. It is also obvious that GPT-2 requires more trained data from each task and more parameters in order to make this one model to be great on multiple NLP tasks. You may want to know how to train or test question answering on GPT-2. And here's one sample data for you. Firstly, we give context to GPT-2. Then let GPT-2 knows that the next tokens will be question and give question tokens and then ask GPT-2 to answer for this question. This is amazing that the language model design can be used not only for language model, but also other NLP tasks. GPT-2, as its name still have G, stands for generative. These translation or question answering NLP tasks also can be generatively trained. The researchers have given the translation example, which was easily collected from web data. 
In order to collect clean data, they collect data from Reddit, which received at least three karma. If you are not familiar with Reddit, but familiar with Facebook, the karma is such as a like button. Here I summarize other differences between GPT-1 and GPT-2. In short, GPT-2 is bigger and handles bigger dimension and look at wider window on the context, and Trambit size is also bigger and there are some changes on layer normalization. Since there is no human label in GPT-2, we can consider GPT-2 is zero-shot learning model. Zero-shot learning model is the model can predict answer without human guidance. Here, I want to compare the GPT-1 size zero-shot learning model and the GPT-2. You can clearly see that the GPT-2, which is a bigger model, definitely has better performance on the overall test data. This table should be easier to understand how GPT-2, which is even zero-shot learning model, is great on multiple NLP tasks and replaced previous records and closure to human performance. Thanks for watching. Here are the references I summarized. I hope this video helped understanding GPT-2, and I will see you on the next video.